Welcome and thank you for your interest in Suncoast Bariatrics. This presentation will take you through the information you need to know about weight loss surgery, our facility, staff, and the commitments and requirements of the patient, all to help you make an informed decision on the best weight loss option for you. Going the path of surgery to improve your health is not an easy one. Rest assured, you have taken an important first step towards a healthier lifestyle with the experts at Suncoast Bariatrics. The quality care we are able to offer starts and ends with our surgical team and dedicated support staff. Suncoast Bariatrics is pleased to work with premier names in the bariatric surgery field. Dr. Tiffany Jesse is one of the few fellowship trained bariatric surgeons in the state of Florida. In addition to a prestigious general surgery residency program, she also completed a fellowship in advanced laparoscopy, making her among the most qualified surgical resources in the southeastern United States. Our patients also have the privilege of working with Dr. Bahardi Shatai. Dr. Abby, as she is known to her patients, is board certified in both obesity medicine and internal medicine, giving her a unique insight into the human body and obesity treatment methods. Dr. Thomas Prebish is also a bariatric surgeon with our office. He completed his medical degree at the Michigan State University College of Osteopathic Medicine and specializes in minimally invasive and robotic surgery techniques. With our team by your side, you can be sure you're always in good hands. We recommend you watch this seminar in a quiet area. Have a pen and paper ready to take down notes or any questions you may have. After you've reviewed the presentation, you can contact our office to ask any questions and to discuss next steps, which may include a consultation. Our course objectives for this seminar are as follows. We know that your decision to have weight loss surgery is a life-changing event. We want your learning experience about surgical weight loss to be as comprehensive as possible. It is our goal to make the pre-surgical process as simple as possible, but we are going to need your participation and commitment. We appreciate your patience during this period and hope you understand that your health and safety are our primary concerns. The best preparation for your surgery is to understand everything you can about the various procedures and the process. Our healthcare team is in total agreement with your decision to change this pattern of obesity, and we will work with you to help you succeed. However, we need your help as well. Success will depend on you, the patient. You will be expected to commit and adhere to the recommended dietary, exercise, and lifestyle changes that we will be explaining later in this presentation. Let's get started. Obesity is a growing problem. It is estimated that every year there are nearly 400,000 deaths in the U.S. that are related to obesity. It is believed that the obesity epidemic is the number one preventable killer outpacing cigarette smoking. More than 40% of the population in the United States is considered obese. Weight loss surgery is known to be the most effective and long-lasting treatment option for morbid obesity and many of its related conditions. But now, mounting evidence suggests it may be among the most effective treatments for metabolic diseases and conditions, including type 2 diabetes, hypertension, elevated cholesterol, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and obstructive sleep apnea, to name a few. Obesity worsens health and quality of life and also shortens life expectancy. Recent studies have concluded that obesity in adulthood is associated with a decrease in life expectancy of approximately 10 years in both men and women. Outlined on this screen are some common health implications of being obese. As you are probably aware, in addition to inflicting life-threatening disease, obesity can inflict emotional stress, hardship, and discomfort. In the past, society believed the only cause of obesity is lack of willpower on the part of the overweight person. Even still, some obese people believe this and cannot understand why they have failed to take it off and keep it off. They are often left feeling hopeless after trying various methods to lose weight, including weight loss programs, diet pills, acupuncture, jaw wiring, and other ineffective remedies. Most often, they end up regaining any lost weight plus a few pounds. Perhaps no other medical condition has been more misunderstood, maltreated, and misrepresented. 
The good part is perception is changing. Obesity is being treated for what it is and what it can lead to. Today, surgery has gained acceptance as the only proven method to treat this disease. The underlying cause of severe obesity is multifactorial. There are many factors that contribute, including hereditary, low metabolism, poor diet, and excessive caloric intake. Body mass index, or BMI, is a measure of body fat based upon height and weight that applies to both adult men and women. Generally speaking, weight loss surgery is indicated for individuals who are at least 75 pounds or more overweight and have a BMI of 35 or greater. In some cases, a BMI of 30 or greater may be considered. To determine your BMI, use the chart on the screen or visit our website, suncoastbariatrics.com, as we have automated calculators. There are several options for treating obesity. The most common approaches for losing weight are diets, exercise, and weight loss drugs. Studies show that diets and weight loss aids rarely work in helping severely overweight people reach the goal of long-lasting weight loss, while professionally supervised diets that include prescription drugs show an average loss of only 6 to 9 percent of excess body weight. Weight loss surgery is another option. With a surgical procedure, patients averaged a 55% weight loss of excess body weight at the five-year mark, meaning they not only lost the excess body weight, but maintained the loss years after surgery. The question that one has to now ask is why surgery? It should never be for cosmetic reasons. It should primarily be for health reasons. Those include improvement in health conditions, sustainable weight loss, improve activities of daily living, improve self-esteem, improve one's own perception. Multiple weight loss attempts have failed and we have seen that proven. Surgery can fail as well. It is merely a tool, not a cure. With commitment and follow-up, one can sustain weight loss with surgery. Now to discuss why you are here. At our office, we offer the following surgical options. The main procedure offered is the gastric sleeve. It can be done through minimally invasive or robotic techniques. The other surgical options are the adjustable gastric band and the gastric bypass, the weight loss surgery that has been done the longest in the US. We will be spending time with each procedure. We are firm believers that knowledge is power, so we'll be asking a few simple questions after each procedure for you to test your knowledge. This is the beginning of our partnership. The sleeve gastrectomy is often referred to as the middle of the road operation as it is more technical than the adjustable band, but not as complex as the gastric bypass. Individuals who should consider this operation are those that are concerned about a potential long-term effect of gastric bypass, those that are scared about having a foreign object in place, as is with the adjustable band, and individuals deemed too high of a risk for gastric bypass. This operation started out as a two-part procedure, but the results were so promising the individuals were not returning for the second stage. With the sleeve gastrectomy, the stomach is divided in a large portion, approximately 75% of the stomach is removed. This is depicted in the picture on your right. The resulting edges are stapled, forming a tube-like stomach that resembles the shape of a banana. The procedure reduces the size of the stomach, resulting in a restriction of the amount of food and therefore calories that can be consumed. Most can expect to lose 30% to 50% of their excess body weight over a 6 to 12 month period. With the sleeve gastrectomy, we are not doing surgery on your small bowel, so we are not affecting your absorbency at all. There is no foreign object wrapped around your stomach, so that eliminates the need for adjustments, which involves needle sticks. Also, the part of the stomach that is removed is called the fundus. This is the portion of your stomach that produces the hormones that stimulate hunger. In addition, the part of the stomach that is removed is actually the portion that stretches the most. The part you are left with is the least likely to expand, which is exciting news. Like with any surgical procedure, there are always risks of surgery, such as bleeding, infection, and pneumonia. 
One, however, has to consider the risks versus benefits of losing weight. When you meet with your surgical team, they will go over their specific statistics. Complications directly related to the sleeve are leakage from the staple line and poor gastric emptying. A patient, Shannon R., had the sleeve gastrectomy and is down more than 100 pounds in 10 months. Now that you have watched the module on the sleeve gastrectomy, it is time to test your knowledge. Please read each question and select the best answer. The sleeve procedure works by A. Restricting the amount of food you can consume due to a small stomach and altering the hunger hormone. B. Restricting the amount of calories you can consume and altering your digestive tract resulting in element of malabsorption. C. Creating a dislike to all types of food. The correct answer is A, restricting the amount of calories you can consume due to a small stomach and altering the hunger hormone. Here's the next question on sleeve gastrectomy. When talking about the sleeve, why is removing the fundus considered an advantage? A, the more you can get rid of, the better. B, you are removing the part of the stomach that stores the hunger hormone and leaving part of the stomach which is less likely to stretch over time. C, the fundus reacts violently to sugar. The correct answer is B. You are removing the part of the stomach that stores the hunger hormone and leaving the part of the stomach which is less likely to stretch over time. Let's continue. With the adjustable gastric band procedure, an adjustable silicone band is fastened around the upper part of the stomach to create a new, smaller pouch. The band is connected to an access port below the skin. Through this port, the surgeon can adjust the size of the band by adding or removing saline to an inflatable balloon on the inner surface of the band. To many, the adjustability is considered an advantage as the surgeon can fine tune things without additional surgery. The silicone band that is placed around your stomach is hollow. It is filled with a salt water solution that is like the other fluids in your body. These adjustments are performed during simple outpatient visits in the surgeon's office. The gastric band is the only weight loss surgery with a long-term tool that can be adjusted to help keep the weight off. With the band, the food you eat moves slowly from the small upper pouch past the gastric band and onto the lower part of your stomach where it is digested normally. As a result, you eat less food and feel full faster. You'll find you are content with smaller amounts of food and are not hungry between meals. Your gastric band will be adjusted to meet your individual weight loss needs. Some people lose significant weight loss with virtually no saline in their band. Others require a tighter band to lose weight. If you become ill and are required to eat more, saline can be removed from your band. Like with any surgical procedure, there are always risks of surgery, such as bleeding, infection, and pneumonia. One always needs to consider the risks versus the benefits of losing weight. Complications directly related to the band include slippage, which ironically is not a band that moves, but a stomach that migrates up a bit. Another complication related to the band includes erosion, which creates a stomach perforation. With this complication, the band would need to be removed and the stomach hole stitched up. Meet one of our alumni, Susan, who is now off of five different medications and has maintained her weight loss for over 10 years. And here is Carrie, who is 120 pounds lighter with the gastric band. Now that you have watched the module on the adjustable gastric band, it is time to test your knowledge. Please read each question and select the best answer. You need to answer the questions correctly before you can move on to the next section. What is one of the most important elements of follow-up care with the adjustable band? A, getting on the scale so one can keep track of their weight loss. B, adjustments to the band which are performed during office visits. C, to see your surgeon for a pep talk. The correct answer is B, 
adjustments to the band which are performed during office visits. Let's move on to the next question. Here's our second question related to the adjustable gastric band. The band is the only weight loss surgery with a long-term tool that can be adjusted to help keep the weight off. A, true, or B, false? The correct answer is A, true. And here's our final question for the adjustable gastric band. What are the two most common complications related to the adjustable gastric band? A, indigestion and spitting up blood. B, slippage and erosion. C, nausea and vomiting. The correct answer is B, slippage and erosion. Let's continue. The Ruin Y gastric bypass has been performed the longest and by some is considered the gold standard by which other weight loss surgeries are compared, saying that it is the most complex of the three operations performed at our program. The surgery works two primary ways. The stomach is stapled into two sections. The stomach labeled as number one becomes a small pouch that serves as the new stomach. The size of the stomach restricts or limits the amount of food you can consume. You will feel full and satisfied with a much smaller caloric intake. The bypassed portion of the stomach, labeled number two, no longer receives, stores, and mixes with food, but remains functional by continuing to secrete digestive juices. We then surgically divide the small intestine and connect it to the new small stomach pouch, number three. Now you absorb less. Food now bypasses part of your digestive system, which reduces the amount of calories your body absorbs. Due to the restrictive nature and element of malabsorption, this operation potentially offers the fastest weight loss. Two other important features include the dumping syndrome and lack of the hunger hormone in your system for a short duration, 12 to 15 months. Both of these are worthy of spending more time on. The dumping syndrome is related to the ingestion of refined sugars or high glycemic carbohydrates. These foods rapidly empty from the gastric pouch into the small intestine, which triggers a cascade of symptoms, such as heart palpitations, sweating, nausea, vomiting, as well as diarrhea. If you do dump, the likelihood of you eating that food in the near future diminishes, so in essence, it is forced behavior. The downside is that dumping makes you feel awful and wears you out. The co other contributing factor to the rapid weight loss is that the hormone that stimulates appetite is greatly diminished after gastric bypass. Unfortunately, in time, our patients do report some appetite returning. So once again, we need to stress that weight loss surgery is just a tool and behavior modification is very important. Like with any surgical procedure, there are always risks of surgery such as bleeding, infection, and pneumonia. One, however, has to consider the risks versus benefits of losing weight. When you meet with your surgical team, they will go over their specific statistics. Complications directly related to gastric bypass are intestinal leakage, anastomotic structure, and vitamin and mineral deficiency. Meet Vicki who had gastric bypass several years ago and is an advocate of weight loss surgery. Now that you have watched the module on the Ruin Y gastric bypass, let's test your knowledge. Please read each question and select the best answer. Known complications of gastric bypass are A, intestinal leakage, anastomotic stricture, and vitamin and mineral deficiency, B, heart attacks leading to death, C, unrelenting nausea and vomiting. The correct answer is A, intestinal leakage, anastomotic stricture, and vitamin and mineral deficiency. Here's the next question on the Ruin Y gastric bypass. Dumping syndrome occurs only with the gastric bypass and it is considered forced behavior modification. A, true, B, false. The correct answer is A, true. 
The weight loss does differ from patient to patient and the percentage of potential body weight loss can differ by procedure. Please remember that these operations are merely a tool. If you work with the tool, you will experience weight loss with any of these procedures. Your surgical team will be placing you on a high protein diet prior to your weight loss surgery. We refer to this as a liver shrinking diet. If you are overweight, there is a good likelihood that you will have a fatty engorged liver. We want to make your surgery as safe as possible, so one of our goals is to shrink the liver a bit. This means your liver will be smaller and easier to move out of the way during the surgical procedure, which is a benefit, especially during laparoscopic procedures. A smaller liver can also result in less time being spent under anesthesia, which can lessen the risks of complications. The importance of protein cannot be overstated. A diet with adequate protein ensures that you will lose fat, especially abdominal fat, which can interfere with surgery and maintain lean muscle mass even while reducing your caloric intake. A balanced and nutritionally rich high protein diet ensures that your body will have everything it needs to recover well from bariatric surgery. The high protein liver shrink diet also helps you acclimate yourself to the higher protein, reduced calorie, reduced carbohydrate diet you will have to follow after surgery. The specifics of your diet will be determined by your physician and medical team. Expect to consume low calories between 70 and 120 grams of protein daily, as well as a multivitamin mineral supplement. Some physicians prescribe all liquid diets consisting of protein meal replacement products, such as shakes. Some physicians specify certain products, while others allow you to make your own choices within certain parameters. Your medical team will choose a diet for you based on your needs and goals, your health, and the procedure that is planned. Most of our patients are required to diet for one to two weeks before surgery, but each are treated individually, so it could be longer. Here are some of the post-operative diet behaviors and modifications. Don't drink calories. Your caloric intake will be very limited after surgery, which should help you lose weight. Don't work against your surgery by taking in liquid calories that provide no nutrition and slow your weight loss. Make every calorie count by focusing on protein and greens. Chew and then chew some more. Chewing your food thoroughly is essential to preventing nausea and vomiting during and after your meal. Large chunks of food can have trouble passing through the digestive tract after surgery, and if it gets stuck along the way, it can cause pain. Don't drink fluids during or immediately after your meal. It is essential that you reserve the small amount of space you have in your stomach for high quality, nutrient rich food. Drinking during your meal will fill your stomach with fluid instead of food and drinking immediately after your surgery can wash food out of your stomach, making you feel hungry sooner. Separate food and fluid by at least 30 minutes whenever you can. Protein, protein, protein. Protein should be your primary focus when sitting down for a meal. Not only will it help you maintain your muscle mass while losing fat, but it will also help you feel full longer after your meals. Avoid carbs. Carbohydrates are highly processed foods such as bread, pasta, sugar, and rice. Carbs make your blood sugar climb, causing hunger pains and provide no nutrient value. Avoid high caloric liquids such as alcohol. They are considered empty calories that provide no nutritional value. Eat mindfully. No more eating while watching TV. Focus on what you are doing when you eat and stop the moment you feel full. Giving food your full attention will help you learn when to say when and develop new, healthier habits. We recommend a portion size of two to four ounces, which is equivalent to the size of a smartphone. Only you can decide if weight loss surgery is right for you. Thousands of others have already trusted us with their care. We have a comprehensive program with skillful surgeons, mental health counselors, nurse liaisons, support groups, dietary education, and insurance counselors. We offer compassionate care to help you gain a whole new life by losing your excess weight and keeping it off.